Hi, my name is Martin, and I would like to walk you to this new coding project in which we will use Python to create a virtual pandemic. Now, on the screen, you can see some 10,000 white dots. Each of these dots represents a different person. These people, they live in a two-dimensional world where they can move around. And if you look closely, you'll notice that right up here in the top left of the screen, there is one dot that is red. Now this red dot is a person, but this person is not like the other. It is patient zero to what might be becoming, what might become the next global pandemic. Now I'm gonna hit a play button here and then the action will unfold. Now the people are moving around and whenever one of the healthy people gets too close to one of the infected people, at first it's only patient zero, but then it's more and more, they can get infected too by this new disease. And as you can see, as time passes by, the disease starts to spread throughout the population. You'll also notice that some of the points at some point start turning blue. Now these people, they have had the disease, but they have recovered from it. And now they are immune to that disease. Unfortunately for the people, immunity doesn't last forever. At some point in the future, they will become white again, and thus they will have another chance of catching the virus once more. And therefore, this simulation here allows for a pandemic with multiple waves. So without even introducing things like summer and winter time, if you think about coronavirus and how this virus is particularly strong in winter time. So without even things like that, it is possible for different waves of infections to run through this population here. And I think it's pretty cool to look at this. So it's an interesting animation and it's a very fun coding project to be working on. And it's also very interesting to look at how this relates to what we are experiencing right now in the world with the coronavirus pandemic. Now, of course, this is not at all a scientific study or anything like that. I am no biologist and not a virologist. I'm not even a medical expert of any kind. So anything that you will be seeing here is just purely for entertainment purposes and not to be taken as, you know, a new insight into the coronavirus pandemic. But it's interesting to be coding this, and this is what we'll be doing in the next couple of videos. So we'll start with a blank canvas, and from scratch, we will line by line implement what will eventually look like this, where we have a population of thousands of individuals moving across the screen, and we'll have different waves of infections. So right now it's pretty calm. We can see that most dots are currently white or blue, but more and more dots are turning from blue to white. So before long, in the left-hand side of the screen, which is happening right now, there's a new wave of infections coming in, and that's really hurting the population once more. And it's maybe a little bit hard to see this right now, but there's also people dying from this disease that we have in our animation here. So people that currently have the virus that are currently red in this animation here, uh, there's a certain chance that these people die and will then be removed from the animation. And over time, we would expect our population to shrink. So I think this animation allows for a lot of, or this simulation allows for many of the features that we can see in real world pandemics. And yeah, I really look forward to be coding this with you. And um, yeah, I'll see you and the editor. All right, I am now in the editor and um, I have created a new script called pandemic.py and here we will now start with our very first line of code and we'll use this line to import Pygame. So Pygame is this library that you can use to create little games or any sort of animation really. Now, the way that Pygame works um, is we first have to initialize it. We can do that using the, the pygame command init. So we'll just type pygame.init, and now pygame is running. Now with pygame to work, we now have to create what's called a screen. You could also just think of this as a, a window, and this is the window that will be popping up on our screen where the animation will then be happening. So here, I'm gonna use the command pygame, and then dot display set, and uh, display set mode, and now we have to specify a tuple with the width and the height of that window. So I'm going to be declaring another two global variable variables here. The first one being the width, I'm going to set that to 1000, and then the height, I'm also going to set that to 1000. 
And now we can just pass these two variables into this tuple here, which we'll then be using to create the game screen. So let's just run this and see what happens. So I'm going to run this again. And you can see that there's a window that pops up and then closes almost instantaneously. So we have just created that first little step of, you know, having a window popping up. Now we have to make sure that this window actually stays open. And the way that we do that is by writing what's called um, the Pygame loop. Essentially, it's just a regular while loop. So I'm going to be creating a variable here that I'll call animating. It's a Boolean variable. And I'll simply set that, well, not to false, but true. So the animation is, is, is going on, okay? And now we'll say while animating, well, okay. Now I want a simple line break here. So while this is happening, well, we want to be, um, well, we want stuff to appear on the screen. So um, Pygame draws things to the screen, okay? So you'll, in the future, you'll write a lot of code that will be taking care of all of, you know, the pie game things that are happening on the screen. But eventually, and this is very important, we have to teach pie game how we are going to be closing this window. Because if we don't do that, this will just stay open forever. Um, this might be a little bit confusing to beginners or be people that just don't have a lot of experience with pie game, but we really have to implement so what we'll do here is we'll now have um, a second code chunk here, and I'm going to use um, the following description, track user interaction, okay? So we have these two parts here. The first part is where Pygame does the actual action, and down here we are checking whether the user would like to exit out of that animation or, you know, anything else really. And we'll implement a few things down here. So for now, we'll say for event in Pygame.event. Um, dot get. So this is saying Pygame, check everything that's happening on the keyboard and that's happening to the mouse. Now we'll do the following. We'll say um, user closes the Pygame window. So if event.type, this is what it's called, is equal to Pygame.quit. So um, clicking that little X in the top right corner of your window or top left, depending on what operating system you're using. Well, that is pygame.quit without parentheses. This is important. And then we'll just set animating equal to false. And this means that, well, this while loop will terminate and pygame will then no longer be drawing anything. So let's see what that looks like. I just executed the code. And now the window stays open. And the window stays open as long as uh, I don't click here, but once I do, the window closes and we get the finished statement down here. So we have now successfully implemented what's called a Pygame loop. We can run this code, we get the screen, and we can close out of that and the execution of our code finishes. Next, let's define a bunch of colors that we'll be using in our animation. I'm going to go up here and I'll create a little dictionary that I'll call color definitions. And in this dictionary, we'll now define a bunch of colors depending on their red, green, and blue values, which will each be stored in a tuple. So I'm going to create a color that I'll call gray. And gray, um, I checked this before and to try to come up with a bunch of nice values, will be 35 red, 35 green, and 40 blue. Then we'll create another color that I'll call light gray. Light gray. And here I selected the values 70, 70, and 90. And after that, we'll have white. White will be um, 255, so there's obviously now going to be very high values because white is a very bright color, 248 and 240. Then we'll have red. Red now has a large red value, and the other two values are a bit smaller, 239, 71, 111. And lastly, we are going to be using blue, and this will be 17, 138, and 178. Now, of course, you can play around with these numbers, you can change them, it doesn't really matter. Um, this is just a bunch of values that I liked, and a bunch of colors, a little color palette 
um, that I found is quite pleasing to the eye. And now I'll define a second dictionary. That's something you don't have to do as well. If you don't like it, um, you could just use one dictionary. But here I'll now translate these colors into um, words that are more easy for us to understand in the um, animation in our future code. So instead of typing gray all the time, say at some point I would like the background to be white instead of gray, um, I'll now be redefining what the background will actually be in terms of the color name, and then I can easily change that. But if you think it's sort of stupid and pointless to be using two dictionaries here, just use one. That's perfectly fine. You could just say background is gray if you don't want to play around with the colors later on. That's perfectly fine. But here I'll now say color definitions. And, um, I'm going to be using gray here as my background color. We'll then denote, or not denote, we'll just use white to um, represent healthy people. So here, healthy is color definitions white. Then we have infected people. And here, color definition is red. Ah, oh, geez, what's happening here? Red. And then we'll have the immune people. So here, we'll be using blue. And lastly, we have dead people here, well, we'll be using gray once more, so you don't see them because they have then the same color as the background. And let's run this, see whether we have any errors. We don't, the code still runs as before. So um, let's try and see whether we can set the background color. So I'm going to go down here where Pygame draws things to the screen, and we'll set the background color, set background color. And we can do that by using screen dot fill and now we just go into our uh, not color definitions but simply colors and we'll select the background color and if we do that um, the color now should have changed now the reason we didn't see anything um, on our screen is because right now we are not updating the screen we have changed the background color in the internals of Pygame, but not in the screen that we are actually seeing as uh, the human user. So what we have to do here is we have to um, update the screen. And in Pygame, that's just another command that you have to know. It's pygame.display.flip. So let's run this again. Notice how this is now a little bit lighter than before. It's no longer pitch black, but it's gray. And if you don't believe me, we can just go up here and set the background color to red and run this. And voila, we now have a red background. Okay, um, obviously we are not going to be using a background. So let's just switch that back. And now it's gray. So I think to wrap up this first um, video in the series, let's try to draw our very first person onto the screen. And to do that, let's create a new class that I'll call it person. And in this class, we'll now define what a person is. So we'll initialize this class with nothing in there but self. And we'll say that a person has to have an X location in two dimensional space and a Y location. And we'll be just setting this to random values and to draw from, you know, to draw random values. In Python, we need to import the random module. So we'll just type import random at the very top. And now back here, and here I'll now say random the uniform. And well, the x location can be anything between zero and however wide our window is. So zero and width. And now with the y location, which is set zero and height as the two parameters that we'll be drawing from in between. Okay, and now we'll just use a little additional function, which I'll call show. And this function will be used to display the person onto the screen. So here I'll just say pygame.draw.circle. Now we have to specify where we are drawing that, and we'll be drawing this to the screen. Now we have to select all the colors, and I'll just set this to for now, let's just set this to white. We'll change this later on. And then we have to specify the location as a tuple. So we'll say self.x and self.y. And lastly, we have to specify a size. 
I'm going to make that a variable, a parameter of the show function up here, so that we can easily change that. And for now, I'm just going to set that to 10. And now, before the Pi game loop starts, let's create our person. So, person, and you know what? Let's create two. So, we have person one and person two. And down here, where it says Pi game draws things to the screen, let's say person one dot. Uh, not draw, but show. That's what we call the function, and person two to show. Let's see whether that works. Unfortunately, it does not, of course. So, key error white. Yeah, the problem is that I used colors instead of color definitions. That That's what you get for using two dictionaries. I run this code again. I don't see anything. There's got to be another problem. Now, this is actually a pretty simple thing to do. I mean, just look at the structure. I'm first drawing the people and then setting the background color and then updating the screen. So I'm first drawing the people, then I'm drawing the background. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to see the people, so I'll just move this up here. So we first draw the background, then we draw our two persons, and then we update the screen. Okay, now I'm running this, and finally we can see these two dots down here. So let's exit out of this, run this once more, and see, yep, they are now in two different locations. It's completely random. I run this again, again, two different positions. And I think this is now a good point in time to finish this first video. This is part one of how to simulate a pandemic in Python. We have implemented our first Pygame structure, and we have already introduced the person class and have drawn two people onto the screen. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next part.